Hi, good friends. So welcome once again. All too soon we come to the end of the of the term of the semester. And I know you guys you are preparing seriously for the exam. So friends, don't worry. You'll be fine. Like I always say, you'll be fine. So there's nothing complicated about the exams. Um, FA3, like I said, is always easy. It's very easy. Um, just, just, just practice and you'll be fine. Okay, just practice and you'll be fine. It's not about getting all the entries correct, but it's about getting as much entries correct as possible. So that's that's what I'll go for. It's not about balancing the sheet. Okay, we used to say balance sheet. It's not about balancing the sheet. We don't balance anything again. Okay, somebody could balance it and balance it wrongly. Someone will not balance it, but will get about 95% of the entries correct. So that should be my focus. At this point, I'm just going to share with you the, um, the exam preparatory slides. Some of you might have asked whether I'm going to be preparing an exam slide, a preparatory slide on advanced financial management. No, I'm not doing that. The, I'm not the model coordinator, so... If anything, Jerry will do that. So those of you who managed to attend the session, um, you know what we did, okay? You know what we did. Share with your colleagues who couldn't make it to the advanced financial management. Otherwise, you'll be fine. Otherwise, you'll be fine. Let me share the screen. Let me share the screen then. We can go through. So for, for FE3, um, in terms of the professional bodies, we are using basically the the ACCFR text, financial reporting text. Listen, we, we could go more deeper than this one. But at this level, we have to stick to the level uh, at which we've been, we've been assigned to. We don't have to confuse you with some other technicalities, okay? For example, if you take a question like the deferred tax, did I say deferred tax? The deferred payments. There is always some component of interest because you are dealing with the present value. You are discounting some figure, a future figure. You are, you are reducing a future value to a present value. So you are more or less um, saying that the $3 million I will pay you in three years is actually, let's say, $1.5 or $1 million today at a certain interest rate. So if I'm reducing $3 million to $1 million today, I need to always look at a certain interest component and accrue. Okay, but we're not going there. When you start writing your ACC, strategic business reporting, you see those items there. Then you can unwind your interest and recognize them in the books. Otherwise, don't worry. Just stick to what we have at this level and you will be fine. So we have four questions. Four questions uh, for, the, for the exams. Predominantly, there will be computations and theoretical analysis. So you have a scenario we want you to analyze Tell us this scenario deals with this particular concept or terminology. Straight to the point. Look at the marks allocated and just write simple, concise sentences which, which brings out your point. That's it. Don't worry your head writing essays. You don't have that time and luxury. Okay. Um, of these four questions, we have broken them down into two sections. Section A and then Section B. Section A is compulsory. Just one full question. Question one. And you need to attempt all 50 marks for that one 50 marks it's designed in such a way that if for nothing at all you can get your 40 and pass okay um, like i said friends summer is not meant for receipts unless there's something beyond your control then you can you can go for a receipt and put in an ecs and write a receipt otherwise summer is not for a, for receipt okay so it's designed in such a way that you can get your 40 out of the 50 and live in peace go in peace okay then we have the section b which has three questions you choose two questions from the three questions once again four questions you must answer three questions out of the four of these three questions you must answer one is compulsory that is section a everything in section a is compulsory and then you have section b Three questions from section B, you choose two. 
that's what I'm saying here. All right. Section A, what do we have there? So once again, like I'm saying, nothing complicated here. Section A is in three parts. We have one question, question 1A, and it deals with IFRS 10, business combinations, and IFRS 3, the goodwill calculations, okay? And it is it is looking at typically um, having 35 marks, okay? It's, it has 35 marks. What I want you to focus on here, I think that's the question with the most marks. Question 1A. Focus on only the consolidated statement of financial position. There is nothing like um, statement of profit and loss, nothing of that nature. So we want you to be we want to be sure whether you can at least defend your knowledge up to seventy percent on this one. Okay, so only on the consolidated statement of financial position. The usual footnotes that we know will normally come up. Okay the unrealized profit on inventories there's no unrealized profit on pp so just let me hint it okay the intercompany balances goodwill impairments and the revalued financial assets equity investment they tell you that the equity investment at the beginning was 1.5 at the end of the year it has reduced to 1.2 or it has increased to 1.8 what do you do with the increase what do you do with the increase okay so tell me whose equity investment have might have increased or decreased. Is it a subsidiary? Is it the parent? What do you do with it? Okay. Now there are key notes I want you to note here. Okay. So um, you could use the format we use in the ACCA text. Okay. Where well, we have three different columns where you want to ascertain the post acquisition reserves and then the pre acquisition reserves and know which one goes into the balance. Into the, I don't want to use balance sheet, into the statement of financial position. But please don't worry about the layout. Choose a format you think makes sense to you, and you should not be penalized for that. Now, key things I want you to, to look at there's a, it's a media acquisition. It's a media acquisition. But in media acquisition, usually for the statement of financial positions, not, not much is affected there. Okay, Almost everything runs easily. Now, the only thing you should look out for. Under this item of media, is the depreciation adjustments in terms of the fair value of the assets in one or two items as well. So you know them, just go into them. I'm not I'm not lecturing, I'm just giving you say, the points. And then again, look at the purchase consideration. It covers all the four known dimensions when it comes to purchase consideration. Cash was paid, um, deferred payments, discounted to present value, loan notes which has been converted, okay, or which has been which has been offered as payments, share for share payments, okay, from the parent to the subsidiary. These are easy. You can calculate them. They all go into the goodwill. Goodwill is an asset. It has a debit balance. Where would the credit balances go to? So if you want to better understand accounting, know your debits and credits. Okay, so that's what I'll ask you. Most students couldn't get the, the credit or most students still do not get the credit treatment. Okay, so I've intentionally um, plugged in a reference that look at the lectures on the mechanics of consolidation, slide 28. Gives us how we can treat these credit entries for the purchase considerations, and you should be fine. Now, again, on the question, still under question one, okay, still under question one, okay. So like I said, question one is in three parts, still under question one, still under section A, nothing complicated. You then get a second question, which is worth seven marks, and it focuses on disposal of group accounts, how to determine the gain or loss on the disposal. Now, the emphasis is more on can you calculate goodwill based on IFRS 3, okay? Can you determine the or calculate the non-controlling interest? From the information given and then based on this to put them together calculate the gain or loss on disposal very easy okay you should be able to do this in less than three minutes maximum five minutes then there's a question the third question still under section a which is worth eight marks now i've given you a hint over there those of you who came to the tutorial class i think were able to derive this item so i've still one of put it out there as a challenge 
go find it. If not, consult your friends. Conceptual framework still is accessible, okay? Now, the key arguments here, you know, accountants, you know, we've, we've brought about standards and regulations to ensure sanity within our profession and discipline. However, it has led to accountants manipulating and cooking the books. What is the key terminology assigned to this where accountants try to do their own thing, fishy deals, okay? It's not fraudulent. The word is not fraudulent. It's fraudulent. It could be fraudulent, but the word is not fraudulent. So look out for that key terminology, okay, where accountants try to manipulate and cook the books. So you, you look at the conceptual framework, you find it there. Now, over here, you should be able to um, possibly illustrate these items, okay? So if you know the term, simple illustrations or examples to support your, your argument. Remember, concise explanation of your points is very important. Don't just outline the examples you may be giving or the illustrations you want to provide. Don't just list them concise explanation to, 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 to support your argument. Okay, all right. Section B, the optional questions. There are three questions, like I said. Nothing complicated once again. I keep repeating this in red. Nothing complicated here. Yeah, nothing complicated. Okay, so under section B, we have three questions. You have question number two, okay? Question number 2A deals with where IFRS 15, and it is worth 15 marks. Interesting, IFRS 15 word 15 marks now it's a blend of simple analytical arguments and calculations or illustrations now over here what we want to say is that the marking scheme requires you not to be generic don't write um, something abstract okay the standards are specific the standards may be generic but whenever you are you have a scenario you must be specific okay so be specific and when you are addressing these questions, relate the standards to the case study on hand or to the scenarios given on hand. Don't leave it hanging. You lose marks. Again, under question two, you have question two B and C and deals with provisions and the contingencies. You know them. Um, I didn't put the number amount, number of marks there, but I think it makes up the remaining marks. I think ten marks, if I'm not mistaken. So we have. Um, 10 marks, I think so. Question 2B and 2C. So contingency. So understand this terminology, the key terms, okay? The provisions, contingent asset, contingent liabilities. Now you also be given three different scenarios. Of these three scenarios, you need to identify which scenario relates to which terminology. So this scenario deals with uh, contingent asset. Why? Explain why. This scenario deals with provision. Or contingent liability why give explanation okay all right then we have we come to question three question three um okay question three once again nothing complicated so question three a b and c deals with ias 12 and it is worth 16 marks so here it is purely comp computational nothing uh, narrative here so we're looking at income tax estimation and deferred tax calculation we've done a lot in class okay we've done a lot in class so if i were you i would just master them and try to understand them and when i see these i will easily flow easily okay question d deals with ifrs 16 okay and it is worth six marks so here i want you to what to, to be able to determine the financial interest cost and then the least liability the lease liability uh, leverage on the lease amortization schedule that we've used the only thing i'll put out i've left missing here is that you know sometimes payments are made at the beginning and sometimes payments are made at the end okay so there's payments in arrears and payments in advance you have to master both so that when you see the question you can know which one relates to which all right don't miss them up don't miss them up. You know, we will still be applying the let the error flow. But this one is a one-off question. I will do my best to get it right. Okay. I'll do my best to get it right. And then again, we have to be tested on IAS 38, the intangible. So similar to the class test structure on research and development costs, 
Look at the marks as, as assigned to this. Three marks to get go straight to the point. And if you want to add one sentence to justify your point, just one sentence to justify it and get your three marks, please. All right. Then we have the last question. Okay. The last question under the optional section. So that one we have question 4A, where we're looking at IAS 36, word 15 marks. So as usual, we want to want to see whether you can use the concept of time value of money to determine the value in use. You will still meet time value of money in your advanced financial management where you know net present value. So the same thing is happening here. We want to we want to know whether you can. You could still match up what you know in AFM to this one or anything you've learned from the past in financial management. Okay. Again, based on that, you proceed to assess the recoverable amount and then the impairment values for each asset which has been given, okay, or a class of assets which have been given. Cash generating units, any of them, okay, you get that one. And then again, we want to reassess your understanding of IAS 16 PP. Don't forget it. I mean, what whatever we are doing here in terms of impairment of assets could still relate to PP IAS 16. Now, if we have that one in place, we just determine the depreciation based on the figures that we've gotten from our recoverable amount and impaired values, and then we calculate our, our depreciation. Okay, so IS 16 vis-a-vis -vis IS 36. Then finally, we have another sub-question under question 4, which deals with IS 33 and its share. Okay, so can you compute the basic... EPS and the diluted EPS when you have a scenario. Can you argue are the benefits of both the basic and diluted EPS to firm operations? Okay, once again, go straight to the point, concise explanation when you're arguing out your points. Okay, finally, there's one thing I want to say here before we wrap up. We are generous in terms of the questions we've given you. It's not much. Don't be scared with getting A, B, C, and D. You could finish that one in 10 minutes and you'll be surprised that, oh, I thought it was March. Question 3A, B, C, D, E. And I finished it in 15 minutes. You can finish it. You can finish it in 15 minutes. Very easy. Okay. Uh, writing the exams online is a blessing in disguise. I've always said because some students will use Excel and it will make life easy. You don't need for them to have a calculator. It makes life easy. If you can use it, use it and then make your life easy. Okay. Now, the samples, one thing I want to put up here, I think a couple of students, well, you know, I just, I populated old questions, old past questions on Moodle where students are, are working it out. Um, somewhere, I think I should have, I should have noted that one somewhere, but it's too late. Most of you have studied. I just want to plug it in here. Somewhere, it looks like you may be thinking it's a replica of this year's exams. No, no, it's not. Okay. The reason why we gave you those past questions for you to practice is for one reason. The concepts are the same. The principles are the same. Accounting standards remain the same, at least for now. They will be modified, but you get 80% still being the same. Okay. So we want you to practice these ones on Moodle with the idea that you will better understand the concepts which have been discussed, which have been treated in class, okay? Don't think this is exactly what will come, or this is a replica of what will come in terms of the details, no. I've given you all the details in this particular video, okay? One thing is read the conceptual framework. Friends, you cannot move out into the world of accounting and not understand the conceptual framework. You cannot claim to be getting an exemption for, from any of the professional bodies without understanding the conceptual framework. Read it like a story. Read for pleasure and it will stick. Now, one thing I also want you to look at is that um, there are some revision samples for, for the compulsory question. I think most students still want to get that portion and I will always encourage you to get that portion correct and you are confident to work out strong, okay? <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> So there are some questions there. You realize in the class test, Picos and Soul came. Um, anyone who was able to understand and do that one in detail can do any other question. If you're able to do the Picos and Soul question, you can do any other question. Okay, so I've just plugged in some three. I said, look at the paradigm and stricter question. Uh, it's a lovely question. I love that question. 
look at the piquant question lovely question i love that question okay and then the er question pair with three tutorials can you master this can you better understand this you are good to go okay and then again for the purchase consideration if you look at an example uh, the picos and soul piquant paradigm and straighter even er they do not have a detailed um um portion on the purchase considerations you see them maybe loan notes and cash payments maybe deferred payments and share for share but in our case here your purchase consideration covers all the four loan notes cash deferred payments share for share okay so look at the lecture slides on purchase consideration i think i i hinted it there and use that one to be able to better understand the purchase consideration friends i end here and what i want to say is that we are so generous generous in the sense that there are a couple of questions in the exams which you will find these questions were just taken from the tutorial questions in fact all the questions you will see all the questions you see in the exams have been treated in class in terms of our tutorial questions all the questions you see are just from the tutorial questions okay tutorial questions are good questions i mean nothing coming out of the blue okay and but what i'm saying is that you will find a couple of questions which are which are the same <laughs> numbers have not even changed numbers have not even changed the structure the language everything the same lovely questions the idea is we want to see whether students engage with, with the materials whether you engage with the materials all right i'll leave it here you will be fine be safe on the day of the exams i'll still be glued behind my pc if you have any challenge drop an email and finally as usual support liverpool okay support liverpool and then you will live long all right friends take care and all the best good to see all of you um, in person those who came and good to have you in my class we'll meet again god willing bye